Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I realise it has been a while since I've actually sat down, filmed a video but also uploaded much on my channel. Today I want to sit down and kind of just do a bit of a summary of the first trimester and just kind of let you know how I've been feeling, how I got through it. I guess I'm getting my energy back, I'm starting to feel a lot more like myself. So it is nice to sit back down and chat to you guys. So let's get into the video. If you are watching this and also pregnant, I just wanna say congratulations because chances are you are maybe within the first couple of weeks, it's maybe your first pregnancy and you haven't really told many people yet. And the strange thing about pregnancy is that the first trimester is the hardest trimester, mostly because you're feeling rough and you have this secret, you can't really tell people why you're feeling rough or talk to people about it and get reassurance. Society kind of says wait till 12 weeks. We kind of did wait with Mia, with my daughter, but this time round we just let my, my immediate family know pretty much straight away. We were very early with just sharing. I figured that if anything was to happen, it would be much better that they knew what was going on without me having to deal with something sad and traumatic um, and also have to explain the whole backstory as well. So I just, I told my mom, we told uh, my brother, his wife, my sister and her partner and also Ingemar's sister and just, it was just better that everybody knew why I wanted to lie on the sofa and just feel bleh and feel sorry for myself quite a lot of the time. So already this pregnancy has proven that diff babies are different, pregnancies are different, births are different. Um, everyone will tell you that, but until you kind of experience it yourself, you really don't appreciate how different they can be. I think in hindsight, I was really lucky with Mia. I had a lot of heartburn and indigestion and other things going on later on in the pregnancy that were more uncomfortable, which, uh, I might get this time round, but the first trimester was fine last time. So I've basically just kept loads of notes on my phone. So I'm just gonna rattle through them and just kind of talk them over. I've put the first trimester as the hardest, which really in perspective, I would say in pregnancy, perhaps yes, but I would say in the whole becoming a mum <laughs> experience, the fourth trimester is definitely the most challenging and hardest emotionally, mentally and physically. So not to scare you off, that <laughs> that's something to look forward to, um, but it's definitely one to remember as a trimester. Um, but yeah, the first trimester, is, it can be really hard because you feel so alone in it. You can't really tell people, you can't talk to people. Um, and my advice would be that if you're gonna tell tell some some family members that you're close to obviously um but if you have friends who have gone through this have had a child our mums our parents then talk to them because they're going to have a bit more of a a realistic understanding and perspective of everything and they might be able to give you advice and tips and suggestions of things to do because they know what you're going through. Watch loads of YouTube videos. I watched quite a few this time around but my first pregnancy I watched loads. I, I also got quite carried away in watching positive natural birth vlogs um, and got like strangely addicted to watching them, which Ingemar found very peculiar, but actually I found it really reassuring to see what was going to happen and the variety of vlogs, of stories, of experiences as well. Um, everyone's experience is different. With Mia's pregnancy, I had a relatively easy first trimester. Life kind of threw more spanners in the works than the actual pregnancy did. Whereas this time round, I really felt most of the symptoms of pregnancy, which was lovely. It feels so slow when you're in that trimester, but now that I've passed the 12 week, 12 week point, it feels like it just went by like a blur. And being my second child, I think the whole pregnancy is going to go like that. And we have a lot going on in our regular life anyway, so that will just speed things up. But also being pregnant and having a toddler 
to look after and feed and <laughs> run around after, um, it really makes it quite a different experience. The signs and symptoms. Now I did do a video already on how I knew I was pregnant. I will link that here so you can go and watch that if you haven't already. But basically the first one is sickness and nausea. So I wasn't ever sick luckily but I definitely felt very sick for a lot of a lot of the time. Mostly every day. This is how I've been feeling most of the time. I look worn out. I feel absolutely knackered. I definitely didn't feel like this with Mia. This is such a different pregnancy and I'm okay in the morning. I'm okay most of the day. And then morning sickness hits about four o'clock when I go and pick up Mia and I just feel completely exhausted. And I always try to do at least like a half an hour walk with her and 45 minutes, an hour play in a play park or whatever. And right now, it is, it's taken all of my energy. It's ridiculous. This is so not me. And then we come back here and I start making dinner or I kind of start it and then I just, I can't stand to either open up the fridge or to finish cooking something. So it's either half cooked when Ingmar comes home or I've just pulled out the ingredients or bought something and just left it for him to cook because I just... I can't bring myself to cook anything. I cannot stand the smell of so many things. I feel like I'm vegetarian. I don't want any meat. Um, so yeah, <laughs> this corner of the sofa is my new home. And poor Mia is just having to put up with a very tired mummy who feels pretty sick most of the evening. It's really frustrating. But at the same time, I know why I feel like this. And obviously, I'm not going to fight it. And I'm going to let my body just rest and do what it needs to do because it's working hard. But it's so difficult because I, I want to do so many things. And I want to, I want to create more content. And I want to share this with you all, but it's too soon. And it's so difficult to keep a secret like this. It's just such exciting news. Now Mia goes to bed at 8 o'clock and quite often I would go to bed at 8.30 and be asleep before Mia. I could hear her still playing with her toys in her room, chatting to her teddy bears, pretending to read herself stories and I was drifting off pretty much every night. <laughs> headaches were something. I didn't necessarily get migraines but I got a lot more headaches so I was topping up making sure I was drinking lots and lots of water and also drinking magnesium so that I could help try and fight those headaches. Uh, bloating, that's one of the wonderful things from about four weeks onwards you just start to not necessarily have a bump but feel <laughs> like you're getting larger and clothes are becoming a bit more uncomfortable and it's mostly bloating and we all know how bloating eases itself so that was lovely. Um, stuffy nose and bleeding nose as well so that's definitely a symptom of pregnancy is having a bit more congestion and also getting nosebleeds and as you've probably seen I got quite emotional and this is a theme that I think will continue throughout this pregnancy. I cry at everything <laughs> and sometimes I cry at nothing but we had a huge amount of earthquakes throughout my first trimester before the volcano started erupting which those words are insane to say in the first place before the volcano erupted but here in Iceland that's quite a normal natural occurrence. It's not normal every day but um, we had over 6,000 earthquakes which was pretty uncomfortable, scary, <laughs> made me very anxious but my emotions were so much more heightened in pregnancy and I spent a lot of the time just feeling really unsure of what was going to happen and the fact I could hear the earthquakes coming before they hit really played with my anxiety and I don't I'm not someone who has anxiety um, but I've really felt it and I feel for people who live with anxiety because now I have a little bit of a an understanding and awareness of how horrible it is and what it can do to your mind and also yeah a volcanic eruption that is in the city you can see it from our apartment 
that's pretty scary in the first place. I went straight off of coffee, so no coffee, completely just cold, what do you, what's the term? Yeah, here we go, baby brain. Um, just completely stopped drinking coffee, which I suppose is good for me. And of course the fridge became very, very stinky. Now my husband Ingmar is keto or keto most of the time and keto food just, it just stinks. It really does. <laughs> Normally I find it not very appetising and quite greasy and it just just smells. We don't have a door on the kitchen, it's open plan. Um, and so as soon as he opened the fridge I could smell it from the bedroom. <laughs> and when he started cooking dinner I would have had to already be out of the kitchen or already finish my dinner before he started. We had to have separate meals. I just couldn't stand to be around the frying pan or any of his food because it just made me <laughs> Moving on to sharing the news. Now this is one of the most fun parts of pregnancy but it's also quite a strange thing because it's exciting to tell people that you're pregnant and you're expecting this this new baby, this new life into the world but you don't feel that different. You don't feel very pregnant yet. So you kind of tell people and then it's just, life just keeps going on and you just start feeling more and more yuck. I definitely wanted to tell people for the 12 week mark. I don't think that I would have been able to keep this to myself because I was so excited. I felt so lucky and it was so nice just to be pregnant again. I was, yeah, I was just so excited about it. We both were, we all are, Mia included. So we told our family very early. I told a few of my mum friends here who were either pregnant as well or had just had a baby. Um, so it was kind of nice to be part of all of that again. And yeah, it was just, it's nice to tell people who actually have gone through it or are going through it because you can just connect so much easier than with a friend who hasn't been pregnant or is trying as well and it's really difficult then because you're kind of very aware of their feelings and their emotions and I do have a few friends in that situation so when we did get to the 12 week mark I told them before we made an announcement just to try and be a little bit more sensitive around them. Um, but it's it's really difficult. And again, that's why I feel so lucky and so blessed to be pregnant in the first place. We all know that the last year and a half has been an incredibly odd time. It's been so difficult for so many different reasons. But one of them being that we we probably all feel a lot more isolated and lonely than we felt before. And I think this is something that in the first trimester you feel anyway, but being in a pandemic at the same time and in a different country than your home country, away from your friends and family, it can be really, really, really hard. <laughs> and I'm not saying this to kind of say, feel sorry for me. I want to just say this because I know that some people watching probably also are in that situation and I just want to say you're not alone and if there's more videos you can watch to help you not feel so alone and FaceTime your mum, your sister, your best mate, speak to people who are pregnant, join some Facebook groups, you know, just try to look for ways of being with other people in a safe way that you can because the first trimester can be really isolating and it's so hard to even explain to your partner how you're feeling and what you're going through without it sounding dramatic or like you're just moaning or I don't know, just I suppose it can get really tiring to hear that you feel sick every single day and that you're tired every single night because you get sick of it as well but it is really hard for them to understand they are, they are pregnant, <laughs> they are also expecting a child but they don't have any of the symptoms and especially if it's your first time it's quite hard to communicate how you're feeling so 
I would suggest that you try whatever way you can to kind of reach out and not feel as lonely in it as well. I downloaded the app Pregnancy Plus and checked, read along the weekly updates to tell you how you'd be feeling, what the tips and advice for your health is, what's going on with baby, and I was pretty, <laughs> pretty much spot on with every single week and have been since, so that was quite reassuring. One of the, <laughs> the things that I did this time round, if you watched my previous videos with my pregnancy with Mia, was that I've changed midwife so I don't I didn't go to the midwife at our local health clinic um, which I did previously and looking back was a horrific experience where she said some incredibly unprofessional things to me which seeped into my head and my emotions and I probably believed way too much of what she was saying but anyway, I'm, I've changed to a lovely midwife who is very firm but fair. She's Icelandic, she is very professional. But we have really good appointments and I feel so reassured and informed about things. And the difference has just been vast. It really has. So if you are in Iceland and you're not happy with the, the care that you are getting from your midwife, I highly suggest that you move midwives as soon as you can because I did that in the latter stages of my pregnancy with Mia and it was just so much better. So if you are going through anything like that, if you can move midwives, then definitely do it. I felt oddly hungover. That's probably the best way of describing it. Just that kind of tired, yucky, sicky feeling where you don't really know what to eat and you know if you have something to eat you'll probably feel better. You just also want to lie in bed and sleep it off or be on the sofa and watch Netflix. And that's pretty much how I felt most of the time. Um, obviously having a toddler at the same time, you can't really do any of that. You have to be up and active with them and or they're just going to be jumping all over you on the sofa or in bed. Um, so yeah, Mia kind of pulled me back into life and outside and off to the play parks and so on, which I'm really grateful for because it has done me the world of good. It's much better for her. She was probably wondering like what's going on with my mummy. She does know that mummy is pregnant. She has a baby tummy. Um, she says that she has a little sister. She's going to be a big sister. I think she's got this idea of being a big sister, so everything is sister to her. She has named the baby Warren, which is a peculiar name. It's come out of nowhere. I don't know any Warrens. She doesn't know any Warrens. There's no Warrens in her nursery, so I don't know where that's come from, but it's really cute to see. So I put a couple of things down here that are sort of tips if you are dealing with morning sickness. I got the Preggy Pop Drops. I think you get lollipops and sweets as well. They definitely helped me. I would take one of those around four o'clock when I went out to go and get Mia from nursery and they helped me for the next two hours to the point where we had finished dinner and I could be on the sofa and just rest a little bit. It definitely felt worse when I'd overdone it and when I did things like bending a lot more. Everyone knows, yeah, eating little and often definitely helps. Snacking on dry food, um, crackers and cheese was definitely something I kept going for. Uh, ginger snaps, ginger beer. Kumar got me a shot of ginger one day, which I tasted and nearly brought up. That didn't work. So I think it was just like ginger ale and the fizziness of it that was definitely helping me. Water was really hard, that made me just gag. So I have tried lots of things in my water like mint, orange slices, um, frozen lime, cucumber, just to make it have a little bit of a taste to it so it's easier to actually drink. Cravings. So <laughs> the first thing I've said is that I woke up in the morning and needed to eat breakfast ASAP. I would wake up starving and once I would have a bite of toast, I felt kind of like I was okay again, so I wasn't necessarily starving. But the rest of the day, I just didn't know what I wanted to eat. So my aim was 
to have breakfast, then get everyone ready and out the door, and then I would do a little bit of work and aim to have a bigger lunch at midday and then kind of snack throughout the day. Now, I didn't really have any cravings with Mia, but the first thing that I noticed with this pregnancy is that I wanted, um, I, can't, I remember Ingmar going out to the supermarket and asking what I wanted and I just said to him, I want orange crisps. I don't know what they're called, I don't know what they taste like, but that's what I want is the, a big bag of the orange crisps and I couldn't remember if they were, they, I kept saying Cheerios but that's not right, Cheetos or I don't know, just like those disgusting orange crisps that are not food whatsoever, that's what I wanted and he would buy the big pack of them, I would eat like four or five of them and I was done. But I think it was just that kind of, I wanted to almost inhale <laughs> the orangeness of it, even though it's not flavoured like orange or anything, you know what I mean. Just that kind of wafery texture, I feel it right now, I just want to breathe it in. <laughs> it sounds so crazy doesn't it? The other thing, now I used to eat quite a lot of skier which is the typical, I'm gonna call it yogurt, it's not yogurt. <laughs> um, it's like a cream cheese kind of dessert pudding here in Iceland that we eat for all meals. And I used to live on them, and I've not had one since I fell pregnant. I switched to wanting yogurt. Fruit yogurt, just a normal yogurt that wasn't creamy and thick, just a watery, cheap yogurt. <laughs> That's what I wanted, which was quite hard to find. I didn't want any chocolate, I wanted sweets, which didn't really last too long. Then I switched to wanting smoothies, and after that was toasty. So actually I've had quite a few, or not necessarily cravings, the crisps thing was a craving, I, that texture. But the rest of it was just things that I kind of figured out I wanted to eat. Falafel wraps, this is probably something that I had with Mia as well. But yeah, falafel wraps. I think that kind of just, it makes me think of my sister, it makes me think of home. So it was a bit more like comfort food really than a craving. And then I think I've just lived on, yeah, avocado, tomatoes, cheese on toast <laughs> uh, for the rest of the time. And then going to a bit more of a serious topic. So with Mia, I had a very smooth pregnancy. I was incredibly lucky. No scares, no worries. Whereas this time round, although I've had a good pregnancy so far, I unfortunately had three different bleeds in two weeks, quite early on in this pregnancy. Now I talked about this in the 12 week scan video. Everything is fine, I'm fine, baby is fine. We're very lucky. This is something that I wish more people who experience it would talk about because if I knew that it was quite a common thing to happen, I don't think I would have been as worried. Although I think I coped with it quite well and I was I was pretty calm and felt reassured by my by my midwife. And I managed to get a scan the next day anyway um, to check everything over. But it turns out that this can happen and if it has happened once, it can happen again. And that is quite a normal thing. It's your body sometimes just having a clear out or there can be bruising and it can be something that's been there for a while and your body just has a little clear out. And so I suppose if you think of it like that, then you th it can be a good thing. But of course, <laughs> when it happens to you, it is incredibly scary and it's not something you want to see. You definitely don't want to go to the toilet and see any blood whilst you're pregnant. And the feeling of cramping, or the feeling like your period is about to come on, is a really worrying thing to feel when you're in those first few weeks of pregnancy. And my heart just goes out to anyone who doesn't get good news after going through something like this. And luckily, we are okay, we're all good, baby is doing fine and my body just needed those clear outs and I'm glad it's done and it hasn't happened since. It's quite a common thing, be aware of it, put a pad in, just check every couple of hours how much more blood there is and I think the, the advice is if you need to change that pad within the hour then 
that's a bit too much blood so definitely go to your doctor go to your midwife get an appointment and get a checkup okay <laughs> let's go on to baby brain so i always can't claim baby see <laughs> claim baby brain for lots of different things which is a fantastic excuse isn't it i would describe it as just zoning out <laughs> for the first 12 weeks i just felt pretty numb like i was here but i just had nothing to say or to contribute to the world or i just i didn't feel motivated to sit and film a video or to share anything or to post to instagram or write on the blog or anything i just I hardly even phoned people because I just didn't really have the attention span for a conversation and I didn't think I had anything to say to them and I didn't really even want to talk. I just wanted to chill and sleep and be on the sofa and that's just, just so not me. But yeah, not motivated and finding it really hard to sit down and edit videos which is kind of the reason there's not been much on my channel for a while. Just trying to get myself out of that and then to the second trimester and feeling just a bit more like myself and having things to say and feeling like I can get back into work and finding me in all of that again in the pregnancy. I think when you're pregnant and you have other children, they are your main concern, your responsibility. They're your priority, your pregnancy, your kids, your husband, and you kind of come in there somewhere. And when you have no energy for it and no motivation, it's really hard to actually prioritize yourself. Um, although you can look after yourself in the pregnancy and take your multivitamins and drink lots of water and eat well and give in to some of the cravings. <laughs> um, it's hard to, to do the exercise part and to actually to kind of do things to make yourself feel a bit better. So I totally get, if you're lying on a sofa and you're watching this, I get that. You will feel better in the second trimester and your en energy will start coming back and you'll feel more like yourself and you'll be ready to go for walks. And I have tried to do an evening walk every single day. Um, yes, sometimes other things happen and life just gets in the way or I'm, you know, I'm looking after Mia or whatever, whatever's going on. But I'm trying to do this so that I have a little bit of me time. I can listen to a podcast. I get a good walk in. I can go at whatever pace I want. And also it's, it's just getting me out of the house on my own to do something, which is, is a luxury when you have a toddler. Just kind of having that me time and doing a little bit of exercise and going for a swim or something is very, very helpful for the whole of the pregnancy and when I'm thinking about birth again. My stomach muscles now towards the end of the first trimester, I've started really feeling like there's a bump there and my body remembers <laughs> And I've had to pull out the pregnancy genes, which are far too big right now, which is good. But I'm just at that in-between stage where my trousers are too tight, leggings are fine, and pyjamas are comfy. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not into the, the pregnancy clothes yet. But I do feel like my stomach muscles are being stretched and it can get quite uncomfortable towards the end of the day and I think I'm going to ask Ingmar to bring out the, ex the exercise ball so I can bounce on that a little bit in the evenings just to help um, my muscles and my hips and things like that avoid any sciatica pain. But yeah, the pregnancy pillow is out and it's on the bed and it, it's just, Ingmar calls it the wall but um, it is just, it's my protective hug to go to sleep in and I absolutely love it. It's fantastic. The last thing I've written about are things to help you in pregnancy. So the first thing is prenatal vitamins. Now we all know to take prenatal vitamins, especially folic acid for the first 12 weeks at least. With Mia, I took an Icelandic prenatal vitamin. I took it throughout the whole pregnancy and I think that was it. It had folic acid in it and a whole load of other vitamins and nutrients and whatever. 
This time round, I took the, there's a few more products on the market here now. So I actually managed to get the British prenatal vitamin, Pregnacare, I think it's called, which because of deliveries to Iceland, they, they ran out in the entire island. Um, so yeah, I had to stop that one. But actually I spoke to my midwife to get some suggestions and she said, to, if you're feeling really sick, change to just the uh, folic acid. So that's what I did for the rest of the 12 weeks and she checked all my levels and I was completely fine for vitamins and nutrients. So this morning's delight is that I have to go for a blood test and much like everything in this pregnancy, I feel really nervous. <laughs> I feel anxious about quite a lot of things and I don't know if that's because I'm that bit older and so I'm just worried or if it's just because there's so many things going on in the world right now and I just I kind of just want to be left alone <laughs> but I'm fine with getting the test done and obviously having my blood checked and making sure that everything is okay and whatever isn't we treat or whatever um but yeah just these things make me nervous they really do it's minus five at the moment it is really really snowy and cold i kind of just want to be cozied up in bed working on my laptop but i will go and do this and then it's ticked off and done and i can go and have some breakfast then that definitely helped with sickness as well so speak to your midwife if that's something that you think you might be interested in switching to do. Rennie's for indigestion I have I just straight away I knew how bad it got last time so this time I got a packet in the car and a packet in every pocket of every coat <laughs> so that they're always on hand so I'm sorted for any indigestion. Uh, pregnancy pillow is out and on the bed there are lots on the market. Mine is definitely not a great suggestion, but to buy one here would be an absolute fortune. And realistically, this is probably going to be my last pregnancy, so there's no point in buying another one. But yeah, definitely get yourself a pregnancy pillow because it's just so comfortable, honestly. A nightlight in the bathroom. This is something that we did that my mum gave me for Christmas years back when I was pregnant with Mia. We put it in the bathroom because everyone knows you definitely need to get up through the night. I think I've managed a couple of nights where I've slept through and it's been amazing. But yeah, going to the toilet through the night, you don't want to turn on the big light. So having a night light in there is a good thing. I also switched to Sensodyne toothpaste. Um, a few weeks into the pregnancy I went to see just for a regular checkup at the dentist and we were talking about gums and pregnancy and whatever so he said a softer toothbrush and sensodyne toothpaste so I switched to that and to help with bloating and constipation <laughs> I definitely suggest keep up your water levels but also try out some magnesium and get little tablets that you dissolve in water it tastes really really nice I think and it helps with migraines and headaches personally for me, hopefully for you as well. But that's something that has definitely helped me too. So there we go. That is my kind of update chat for the first trimester. I will make sure to sit down and do this for the second trimester as well. And just kind of keep a bit of a pregnancy diary for this pregnancy too. If you're pregnant and have any anything to say, any questions, any comments, whatever, write it down below and I will chat with you there. Make sure to subscribe, thumbs up and hit that bell button and I will see you in another video soon. Bye guys!